Hi, I'm Judy Mudd. When I begin a painting, then I know I need some soft edges, similar to the background that I have in this painting behind me. I need to ask myself, do I want to paint the uh, background wet into wet? Do I want to paint, uh, in other words, wet paint on a dampened surface? Or do I want to use wet paint on a dry surface, which would be more like a wet next to wet kind of a paint application? Uh, it gets uh, similar results in the softness, but they are different. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So uh, if I wanted to paint a landscape, let me just draw a couple little scenes here side by side so you can see what I'm talking about, the difference of painting color on a wet surface versus, uh, say, one on a dry surface, but next wet next to wet. I'm going to put a barn in here that we're going to paint around. It's kind of a sloppy little barn there, but it'll work for our purposes. Uh, there's going to be some, uh, you know, just I'm going to indicate a few uh, hills back here because this is where I want the softness is in the background. I'm going to do another one over here just so you can see the difference of the two processes. Quick barn. It could be a house, it could be anything, it could be, you know, any scene. Uh, and then the, indicating these hills again over here. Okay, so uh, what this is going to be wet on wet. And so the first thing I'm going to do is to wet the surface of the, of the paper. Now, I'm going to let you come in, I'll pull it up closer to you so you can see this a little better. I want to have this to be soft and smooth and my colors to blend and they're virtually, it'll be almost uh, indistinct between the two colors, or between the, the colors that I put down. You can see a glisten, I hope you can see how it glistens. And that's, that's what you want. You want it to be so wet that it has a little bit of a sheen to it. Once it starts to lose its sheen, it, the paint will no longer move on, on the paper. So you want a little sheen. Okay, so this is going to be painted. This is my... wet paint on a wet surface. Now this is my sky. I'm just going to put in a simple little sky. And I'm going to come all the way down to my tree line. Go around the barn right into my trees. So now this whole area is wet. So that means that my colors, subsequent colors that I put on here are going to be diluted by what's what's here already. So let's put a little Quinn Gold in these trees back here. Just some touches of Quinn Gold. And let's also put some Cobalt Blue. And you can see they just merge together. It's really difficult to see any distinction between the shapes. And in some instances, that's what you want. If this was going to be a, a very far uh, distant hill uh, as far as aerial perspective, this is exactly what you would want. You would want this to uh, could hardly be seen where the sky ends and the hills begin. It's going to be that soft. So there's, in, there's uh, instances where you would really want this effect completely merged together. But if you're in a situation where you would really like to have these shapes to be more distinct, uh, distinct uh, more colors showing separation, then what you would do is start with paint that is dry. Let me show you this one up close first and you can see how everything kind of merges together in almost into one big shape. Okay, so let's do this other one over here. So I'm going to start, I'm going to put my sky in, and I'm going to put it in on dry paper. 
Now, it's not going to be diluted by water like this one was. So, it will still dry lighter, but not as much as this one. You know, watercolor dries about 20% lighter than what you put down. So it's going to be a, a relatively light sky, but it's on dry paper. And this time, I'm just going to go right down to the hills that I... and maybe overlap a little bit. Because I want those hills still to be soft, but have, have some distinction. Okay, so now I've got this set here. Now I'll pick up my color, my Quinn Gold, and I'll just lay it in there. See, now it doesn't move like it did over here. Same way over here. Let's put some here. Let's put some here. I still have a nice soft edge at the top because I put that blue all the way down. But the colors don't move as much. Let's put a little more cobalt in here now. You can see how the colors are more vibrant. They're not as diluted as these over here. And that's because I'm painting on a dry surface, wet, next to wet. So when I look at a subject that I'm going to paint, I say, I ask myself, how strong do I want those colors in the background to be? And if I want them to be relatively strong, then I, I will either uh, wait and let this dry and then start to put them in there, or I will do them like this, and I'll just paint a color next to another color because they, they won't move as much. They won't, they'll still have a nice soft edge at the top. Yeah, still play with it. As it dries, I can see it drying. So I have that nice crisp hard edge around my barn. I still have that nice soft edge up here, but you can actually see colors next to color, next to color. I'm going to pop it a little more gold on this side. So that's the difference. If you, if you pre-wet your paper, your shapes will tend to merge as one, and the colors will be more diluted because your paper is already wet. So the paint that you put down will all, already uh, be more diluted than something that, that you did like this. On this one, I painted my sky on dry paper, came right down over the top of where the trees were going to be, and then added my colors in individually so that I would have some distinct, uh, or at least more distinct, I'll show you, say that, more distinct shapes than I did uh, with the uh, wet and wet application of paint. Hope that wasn't too confusing. I know it can be, uh, but uh, at least you can see the difference between the two methods. And uh, while, while I would choose one over the other, because they have two different looks. Okay, hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you next month. Thanks for watching.